the more abstract world of controls. Now, this is an area that um, confuses a lot of people early on, and, and this is what I have to say about control symbols. If it has a circle with a square around it, it's on a computer control screen somewhere. That's, that's as simple as that. We, we all work with modern control systems where we're pushing buttons, OK, menu items um, in Word or OpenOffice or Firefox, Internet Explorer. Any button functionality that's pr providing information or we interface with could, could be illustrated by the use of the square and circle. Uh, a good example of with a square and circle would be let's move over to the, the example PNIs that I provide is a hand switch uh, on a computer screen you would have potentially the ability to click a button that said start or stop the pump or place the pump in auto mode or manual mode and this block with a circle through it would actually represent a button on a control screen that you clicked or some other graphical item that that uh, abstracted a, a switch or lever or button that you would normally push to start and, and stop a uh, motor in the field. Uh, you can see here since you're interfacing with you can see this on a screen this hand switch when you click on a button to do something it sends some sort of electrical signal interpreted first by software, which is this, what this line represents. The programming inside the computer interprets your click as an event. That event then runs some code. That code would presumably tell the pump to start, stop, or change speed. In this case here, I use diamonds to represent the type of analog or digital signals that, uh, that are originating from commonly the PLC. Uh, which is what I use in most of my plants. And um, in this case, it's not hard to, to understand that you click a button, some software program runs in the HMI. It says, oh, he clicked start pump. Sends a signal to the PLC. Send an output to start that pump. That signal then becomes from software to electrical. A switch closes. Power is then supplied to that contact. The pump starts and it runs. Uh, that would be a discrete example, a digital. It has two states, on or off. So that's a digital output coming from the controls. And then the second one would be potentially how fast you want to run. It's an analog output. It's rating the pump from 0 to 100% speed. On the HMI or the control system, it might be a slider that goes from 0% stop to 100% full speed or it may be rate uh, g moving based on some other control consideration flow if it's injecting chemical on a concentration basis which would be the auto functionality or manual is, which is you could set it yourself moving down the line here we see a ZI which if we head over to the instrument letter identification Z which is not obvious speed and hand switches are obvious Z is position and um, I would be indication the second letter so what this symbol is just simply showing is that in some way you're able to tell if that motors running or stopped by looking at the screen now the most way people elect to show whether a, a motor is, is operating is by the color green or red. Uh, opinions vary on which color should be used for the run state. I tend to use green for running, red for stopped, which is similar to the uh, traffic light representation. But uh, I know a lot of industries prefer red for running. Uh, it's a safety based, uh, you have rotating equipment in operation and uh, and so it's red where green is stopped it's uh, de-energized but um, without getting caught up in the the ways and means and preferences this square with a circle in it is showing through a graphic symbol run state in this case here the symbol would be illustrating that you've your the pump is in auto and a lot of times it's important to know at a glance that you've got equipment in auto you're not in manual mode 
and so uh, the system is running on its own controls. Some other very common graphic symbols that you find on a control screen would be, of course, level. Um, a level, in this case, we have a level indicating control, and it is doing two things. It's showing you what the level is in this strip or sump, and it's also providing some sort of control functionality to a valve that presumably is maintaining that level to some desired set point. You can notice right away that there are limits to what I like to show on PNIs. I could instrument this thing up to where you couldn't even see the equipment for the illustration of the set points and PID uh, functionality, but it's, in my opinion, more important to illustrate the main instruments, valves, and graphics that operators tend to work with without encumbering them with all the peripheral symbology that doesn't really provide a lot more insight into how things work, but uh, it complicates the P&I. So it's important that you provide the general symbology and the interface available to operators, I believe. Others may disagree on P&Is, uh, but it's not so important that you try to make it self-sufficient in that at a glance you can tell or reverse engineer the entire control logic for a plant just by looking at the P&Is. That would be very hard to do. Arguably, the symbology is not structured well to even accomplish that. But um, the, the point is to not get too caught up in the detail, but to understand the high level. And with functional descriptions on how the plant's intended to run process description, uh, functional control descriptions that are used by the programmers and the instrumentation and control groups to to actually do the programming and design uh, can be referenced to get to glean a complete and comprehensive understanding of how the plan operates. Now it's obvious sometimes how things do work uh, and when I say obvious I know in this example here as I'm zooming in on 2103 this is a blower. Now the blower has a local disconnect. This disconnect uh, abbreviation is not a standard abbreviation I define it on my lead sheets but uh, you could read it and we'll talk about that. Uh, the, the speed controller associated with that motor has a current since it's the first letter current transmitter and it is providing a analog input so that you can see how much power that blower is drawing through the current indication on a control system when that motor is running it's providing a digital input to the PLC and you can see that there's various things available on the HMI you'll be able to see that motor is in fact running or if the motor is supposed to be running and it's not and the PLC senses that then you have a YA alarm a fault now why is not intuitive but I use those for indicating the state of a running piece of equipment. In this case, Y would be the event would be should be running and alarm meaning it's not, so it's a fault. Uh, when, when motors are supposed to be running and they, they're not, they're considered faults generally. When valves are supposed to be in a position and they're not, a lot of times you'll hear the term trip applied to that state. So it's uh, it's just some, some lingo that's common in the field. And then finally, when the motor is running, the control system is maintaining a log of the runtime that you can access, access uh, KQR, which would be in the table here, time, totalize, if we come to run here, totalize, and then we are finally recording that. Uh, here. So KQR would be runtime totalized that you can access. You might want to use that information for maintenance uh, to indicate that it's time for maintenance like your car will do. Time for oil change. Uh, time for some routine maintenance or change something out or, or do something or just access it. So uh, if we come down the lines here we can see that these this electrical symbol this is 
part of the driver system operating the motor we have here then a hand switch which is on a local panel that we can start stop or place the, the motor in auto which provides remote functionality when it's in auto from the control system uh, when you place it in on it will run off it will never run auto you have functionality from the HMI DCS and the system knows it's in auto and has control because there's a digital input provided it's not labeled here and it it probably should be for the switches in the auto state so if if I had time here I would copy over runtime and change it to auto to indicate that that input is for when that switches in auto because if a a guy is at the control system is trying to run the motor and the hand switch in the field is set to off he may not know why the motor won't run so so when you look back at what got me started on this whole point which is how do you interpret the functionality of of a system you can see here that this hand switch that's available to the operator on the HMI kind of emulates the field switch when the field switch is in auto he then has the ability to start and stop the blower or place it in auto. And when it's in auto, presumably this flow indicating transmitter provides a reading of how much vapor is flowing in this line. You will have some desired set point, presumably, of how much you would like flowing in that line. And the reading from that flow meter, flow indicating transmitter, comes into the system there's a flow indicating controller that you can interface with and see on the screen and you can then when you're in auto it'll send a output to the system to ramp and, and uh, adjust the speed of the motor so there's an example of some of the functionality you have in interfacing with control systems as illustrated by squares around circles <clears throat> and in much the same way that circles with lines are used to illustrate local panel mounted physical devices. Uh, the graphical symbology associated with controls has uh, comparable lines which are used to indicate that for example the dotted line means it's not normally accessible to the operator. That might be, and I like to use that for things that are maybe password protected secret screens that uh, allow you to get in and adjust PID control settings for integral rate uh, derivative values. You may want to change set point values. You may want to get in there and change the points at which alarms occur, where interlocks occur 